I've been meaning to build this for years. There's just something nostalgic about reconnecting with vintage machines from a time that's, well, almost obsolete. Before emulation was at your fingertips, you had to go to the arcade. I was a little too young to live through the golden era myself, but my dad has shared many stories about growing up in arcades. He even bought me Midway Arcade Treasures on the GameCube as a kid. I played it with my siblings for countless hours, and it really was the spark for this project. And while I still plan to build a full cabinet one day, these custom arcade sticks are my first step. So follow along as I finally bring my childhood dream to life. When the time came, I set out to build a tabletop arcade cabinet. I started collecting all the parts I needed, the two-player LED arcade button and joystick kit I found on Amazon. It came with 20 light-up buttons, two joysticks, and USB encoder boards. Basically everything you needed to get started. I even built a rough wooden test box to see how it would all fit together. But since that day, it's really just been sitting in storage, untouched. Rather than letting the parts keep collecting dust, I decided to finally put them to use by building a pair of custom arcade sticks. They will be perfect for our monthly family game nights where we load up retro games and battle it out with my siblings, cousins, and anyone who dares to challenge me. I found an amazing open source design on Maker World by Dr. Duogong. It gave me the perfect housing for the controller. For the filament, I used Polymaker's Pan Chroma Marble PLA for the body. It has a sleek stone-like finish that makes the build feel premium, almost like it came out of a high-end arcade. To color code each side, I used Polymaker Polylight PLA in red and blue for the buttons and trim. I printed everything on my Bamboo Lab P1S, and to my surprise, everything fit together seamlessly. Have you ever wanted to build your own fight stick? This is my DIY guide. All right, so we're gonna be putting these together now. I had to drill a hole out because the design said to go for three millimeter holes, but I ended up only being able to find these four millimeter ones at the local hardware store. They're not as flush on there, but I think that that's okay. So we'll tighten that on with a nut and bolt then, and then we'll put it on in here. I'm gonna have to drill these other holes, so I'll do that right now. So I did two of these different. I actually ironed the top of this print, and then I left this one the build plate, so it actually has a different texture on it. And I kind of prefer that build plate texture over the iron top. So yeah, those will go in here. Oh yeah, that actually does sit almost flush right on there. Nice. That's better than I thought. So yeah, I gotta cut a few more of these bags open. And you can see they have all these buttons in a bag. I actually need this top piece here. I'll go over that. And this can go on here. And that's essentially our controller. We're gonna actually put buttons on the back though. So you can see here these buttons. And then on the back side, these just go right onto here. This doesn't need to be crazy tight or nothing. I'm just gonna hold that with my finger there and then tighten this in. There, that's in place now. We'll put the rest of our buttons in. There, all our buttons and everything are in place. Now we just need to wire it up kind of like we have our other controller here. 
So you can kind of see this is what it'll be like when it's all said and done, clean versus not clean. But we'll tidy it up on the inside. So yeah, basic parts of everything here. We have our 3D printed case. These are gonna what's house everything. We have our encoder board, which is basically gonna be the brain of our console. This will actually allow the buttons to connect via these wires here. So these wires will send the inputs from the buttons to the controller board. The controller board will then send it to the console slash computers. Yeah, that's basically the gist of all of it. We just gotta wire it up. So yeah, all these are three pins. So we're gonna have to connect these three pins to here. This joystick will be, will go to the bottom here because it has more inputs. So this will go to this part of the board. Then I'll just work my way down with start select. Start will be this one. I don't even know which buttons go where. Might have to look that up. So this will be A, B, X, Y. Left trigger, right trigger, R2, L2. All right, then we have left, right, left, right. Take this cable, connect it through here, run it through there, and then connect it to the board on the inside. Yeah, and you can already see we got a better fit. And then this just clips into place. Of course you could glue it and whatnot, but then you lose the ability to open it up. So I think it's time we test the moment of truth to see whether this will work or not. So you can see we got these lit up. And now it's really just time that we come to test this out. All right, I believe I have it all connected right. I have RetroArch loaded up here. I believe I wired everything up properly. I could be wrong. Set all controls, D-pad up, down, left, right. B e button, right button, left, right. Select, start, left, right, left, right. I don't know, that's that. So we have it all wired up properly, I believe. Let's see how these sticks hold up against some classic arcade games. It only makes sense to try a game like Street Fighter, right? Like you gotta have a fighting game. I guess we're going turbo mode. Gotta go Ryu. Zangief. Okay, okay. We got a special visitor. Hi, Esme. Did you come to see me win or do you want to play the game? Next, we're going to go to Miss Pac-Man. You know, this is one of those games that I grew up playing, so it only makes sense. I don't like this layout, though. This is just how it was on the Super Nintendo. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Like I said, this is my game. I could beat this one probably. 
Maybe not. We'll see how far we can get. All right, there's the first level B. Now we go to the next one. Sheesh! You gotta try Galaga if you're playing games like this. Like, it only makes sense. Galaga's a classic. One I've actually grown very fond of. Is, fond of as I started playing more... Uh, arcade games as I got older. Definitely didn't appreciate it on the same level when I was younger. Oh man, actually you want to get sucked up in there because then you can get bonuses. I think you can get double planes if you save them then. So the goal is to actually be grabbed by that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No! So, this is how I envision this being in a full arcade cabinet, but it's just a little bit different when you don't have the ability to build a full arcade cabinet or the space or desire at this moment. So I think that this project actually was enjoyable to the fact that I could still enjoy these games in the same format. I could be bringing these arcade sticks anywhere. We could be using them for multiplayer games uh, on our family game nights. I could be playing them here at home like this. Uh, and really, I think it was just a fun project to be able to finally complete the joysticks. And it's been a long time coming and I'm glad I was just able to do that, so. That's one thing that I really did enjoy about this. And it was fun to be able to get some gaming in on some old retro games. Uh, I think I would play these a little bit different next time, but these were the first ones that I found on the interweb. So uh, yeah, I'm glad I could just show them off here on this video and uh, let me know what you thought. Let me know what your favorite arcade game is. You know, we didn't even play Turtles in Time, one of them beat em up slasher games. We never played the original Mortal Kombat or Marvel vs. Capcom, and those are games that I think would really thrive in the environment like this. If you love videos and retro gaming or DIY builds, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see more awesome projects like this. It was fun to be able to play with Dehancer to get some film effects on this video. I think that that's one thing I'm gonna create a video on next is just kind of showing some of that. They're giving me a free trial to try this out and they'll give me the full version as well. So it just is a nice effect to add to videos. So I'm obligated to almost make content around it, but yeah, this is fun. And I think if you do a project like this, you can really save money doing it yourself compared to buying some of the pre-built options out there. Sure, it might not be the exact same quality, but if you're into building them yourself, you might actually get more enjoyment than you would just buying a because in reality, even buying the filament and all the parts for this, you can spend about $80, maybe less. And, you know, I seen this 8-Bit Doe Retro Arcade Fight Stick and 
that's like $80 in itself. And I feel like that's more of a budget, a budget option. So yeah, I've seen the controller prices go up to $200. So really you can be saving a lot of money building them yourself. And uh, I enjoy this project. Let me know if you did as well. Thanks for sticking around to the end if you did. I think that the colorway was great on this design. I like the red and the blue and the 3D print turned out awesome with this marble PLA. One thing I didn't really like is this little lip here, but you can always glue that down. But honestly, it's not even that big of a deal. I wasn't expecting perfection with this build, as you can tell. And for me, it was exactly what I wanted it to be. Maybe I will just kind of build this into the cabinet as they are, or maybe I will try to build an even bigger version of this. That's kind of my, was my original intent, as you can see with my original, original <laughs> box design. But I do like these better. They're a little bit smaller, a little bit more portable, fit the P1S build plate perfectly. And so, yeah, thank you, Mr. Duogong for supplying this file to make this. Um, thank you, Player2, for always just having arcades that play locally. It's really not that expensive to go have a fun day. You could spend 10 bucks and be playing arcades for hours. So, and pinball, pinball is another really fun one. So what's your favorite video game soundtrack? I've been putting James Bond soundtrack in my videos. If anybody's noticed that at all, I've been trying to tease it out, see if people comment on that, but nobody really said anything yet. So kind of surprised by that, honestly. Yeah, I love building things. It's one reason why I did it was just to build it, to have the enjoyment and fun and creation of doing it. I did design my own original files to do this, but it just was a lot. And at the moment I didn't have the space or desire to complete the project. So this is a baby step towards the ultimate completion of building my own arcade cabinet. I was originally planning on doing a tabletop version, but I might actually end up doing a full cabinet build. So subscribe for that if you want to see a full cabinet build. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video. We'll probably be doing more like it in the future. And subscribe if you just want to see anything else built. Let me know in the comments what you wanted to see built, what your favorite part of this video was. Uh, maybe your favorite retro video game. What video games you have the most fond memories of playing. Did you play with other people in your family? Did you play by yourself? Let me know what your experience was gaming growing up because I know this will be nostalgic for a lot of people, especially my target demographic audience. I know who you are, I can see who you are, and this is for you. So yeah, I actually ended up building my own media server, Plex server, where I'm gonna probably be storing these games so they can be housed off in my own cloud somewhere, but you'll be able to play these ROMs anywhere, really. If you can somehow connect this to However, you could probably play it virtually and uh, maybe that's a video I could do as well. But uh, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Uh, we do a lot of builds like this. We built this keyboard as well. We built this keyboard. We made a video on that. We built wireless mouses. We built computers, servers, all of this you're seeing here we built. I actually built this desk. I plan on doing a whole video about that. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, See you next time. I'll see you on the next video, whatever it ends up being. I have a few ideas in mind, but uh, stick around. Here's a video I recommend. YouTube recommends this video. Go check them out. By the way, I recently started using NordVPN to keep my internet connection secure, especially when I'm downloading files, browsing on public Wi-Fi, or just working on the go. If you want to try it out, use my referral link to get three months 